forget the Oracle of Omaha. How about the Oracle of Lincoln, Nebraska? The governor I'm talking about, Jim Pillen, who signed a series of bills that will return more than $6 billion to taxpayers. Income tax cut, bringing the top rate in Nebraska from 6.64% down to 3.99. That must be nice. Slashing corporate tax to 3.99 from 7.25. Wow. Expanding the property tax credit for homeowners, capping the pace of growth for te- the taxes that school districts can impose on properties. Wouldn't that be nice? That place sounds heavenly. Yeah, well, it's consistent with what's going on in uh, most of the states in the Midwest, not named Minnesota, Wisconsin, or Illinois, but particularly Illinois, of course. Maybe uh, Jim Pillen should... Uh, Join the presidential race. Everybody else is getting in. For more on this, please be joined by Steve Moore, economist, author of Govzilla, How the Relentless Growth of Government, Devouring Our Economy and Our Freedom. Steve, thanks for joining us. Good morning, guys. You know things are going to get bad in um, in Illinois and in Chicago when people start moving to Nebraska. Well, uh-huh. <laughs> uh, if, Iowa, if, if Indiana, I owned a corporation, I would do it. Missouri, yeah, right. Kentucky. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Right? I mean, yeah. so these, Mid- these Midwestern governors, the Republicans— uh, this is like reminding me of the heady days when it was Tommy Thompson in Wisconsin and John Engler in Michigan. And that led to Mitch Daniels in Indiana. We've got sort of a renaissance of Midwest governors with yeah. Pillen and Reynolds and, uh, and some others. Don't we? Yeah. Do you remember, do you guys remember what Mitch Daniels said when he was governor and he had done a tax cut and he said, uh, he said, uh, being a neighboring state to, uh, to Illinois is like having the Simpsons live down the street. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I always thought that was a great line. But look, Illinois is a is a sore thumb in the Midwest right now. You've got a lot of um, activity going on. And the other one, by the way, it's not just tax cuts. There are eighteen, as many as eighteen states this year that will adopt what I think is the most important reform in America, which is school choice mm-hmm. for yeah. minority and low income kids. And yep. it's not happening in the place with the worst schools in the Midwest, which is Chicago. And, and you've got a mayor now who is basically fully owned subsidiary of the teachers unions. It's disgusting. It's outrageous. It's child abuse. What's going on in Chicago that you put the interests of a union ahead of the, the hundreds of thousands of kids. Yeah, right. Well, the first state in the country to repeal a school choice program, which it's is what's been done. Sickening. Oh, you did that? Yeah, yes, it's done. It passed. Done. Oh the my God. tax credit scholarship <laughs> program is dissolving. Direction. You know, it's like that old. Do you guys remember McNelly, the, uh, I think he was the Tribune cartoonist of many, many years yes. ago. And, you know, he was just so great. And I remember one of my favorite cartoons of him is he's in a, in a, um, a greenhouse. And there's this one little plant with, you know, just a little uh, sprout, you know, and it's like the free enterprise system. And, the, and they say, oh, kill it, kill it before it grows. You know? Exactly. <laughs> so yeah. that's, that's, Chicago. that's what we do. <laughs> Um, well, so on, on a happier uh, front, uh, maybe, uh, these candidates that are entering the race for the presidency on the uh, Republican side, uh, yeah. Pence, Christie, and also North Dakota Governor Doug Burgum. I know people don't know much about him outside of North Dakota, but very successful businessman. Um, and he's a billionaire. Uh, he built a business, yeah. software business that's uh, he sold to yeah. Microsoft, I think, or Google, one of the big tech companies. Yeah. And, yeah. uh, cashed out. So, I mean, you've got some talent uh, in the Republican field for presidential, for the presidential nomination, too. Yeah, you sure do. And, and you know, it's isn't it uh, in contradistinction between the Republicans and the Democrats? I mean, who do the Democrats have? They're going to run a, a guy who, you know, is, is you know, incapable of, of really, I, I can't imagine <laughs> four more years of uh, five more years of, of Joe Biden. Uh, and then who's their second choice? Kamala Harris, really? I mean, she's the most hated woman in America. And then, you know, you got Governor Hergel there in California, who's oh. the only thing good about him is, is his hair. He's got beautiful hair, I got to admit. Uh, oh. But then oh, on the boy. Republican That's... side, okay. uh, you've got, um, you know, you've got Tim Scott, who I love, is the senator from South Carolina is talking a lot about opportunity, about school choice, about, you know, making America uh, an opportunity society again. And that's so much in the vein of what America is all about. And I love Ron DeSantis. He's been the best one of the best governors in America. By the way, can I say you may have heard, Dan and Amy, that uh, Trump is running these ads, these malicious ads against um, 
uh, DeSantis saying that even Cuomo had a better record of dealing with yeah, COVID than, yeah. uh, than DeSantis, which is a total lie. And, you know, I'm a Trump fan. I work for the guy. But this is a lie. DeSantis handled COVID about as well as any state. They didn't shut down their economy. And by the way, if you adjust for age, because obviously there are a lot of senior citizens living in Florida, Florida had a lower death rate than New York did. And yet New York completely shut down their economy and their school. But then you have Chris Christie, and I don't know if you know him personally, <laughs> but I mean, What's the, thought, that about? the first GOTB, GOP debate is going to be in August. And I, yeah, I, I mean, I'll have to watch it for work, but I don't yeah. want to watch it because it's just going to be yeah. ugly and it's not going to help the party, I don't think. Well, the big question, of course, uh, Dan and Amy, is will uh, Donald Trump show up? Oh, you know, yeah. he's been threatening that he might not uh, debate. So um, we'll see. I mean, you know, he so dominates these debates when he when he does you know, appear, you know, when he did it in 2015 and 16. So uh, but look, my point is I'm not I'm not um, sold on Trump. I mean, I, I work for him. I have an admiration for what he did for our economy. But I want to I want to see all of I want to see all these guys. I want to see him on the stage. I want to let the best man or woman. Uh, there's a lot of people like Nikki Haley. I know Nikki a little bit. I think she's a great candidate. So it's a it's a good field of really established people. I don't. By the way, I've only met the North Dakota governor one. What's his name again? Doug Burgum. Yeah. 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 I met him once, but he's an impressive guy. You know, wouldn't it? I mean, one thing that Trump proved is it does make a difference when you have someone who's a businessman uh, or woman in office rather than a career politician like Joe Biden. Well, um, from those uh, you know and know you know fairly well because they've been in office for a while, um, yeah. who, what's your sense of who, who do you have the most confidence in that would pursue uh, free market economic policies and really do whatever can be done to reduce the size and spend of the federal <laughs> government? That's a really good question. I mean, I think DeSantis is the real thing. No, I mean, DeSantis has flaws. He's not the warmest guy in the world, you know, so he's not, uh, but he's an impressive, he's an impressive guy, but he's, you know, military. He's not, he's not, uh, you know, not, not cuddly. Bit, but, yeah, that's okay. Yeah, he's not cuddly. He's not kinder and gentler. Uh, but I think DeSantis, look, just look at his record in Florida, folks. I mean, you run on that record. Florida is just booming. I mean, there's development everywhere. There's jobs everywhere. People are flocking to Florida. And that's why I kind of love this idea of a DeSantis versus Newsom, you know, oh. presidential race. Because, yeah, America, what do you want? Do you want the Florida model or do you want the California model where they're, they're turning out the lights in California because they don't have elect, enough electricity, uh, you know, and because all this green stuff. So uh, and by the way, California is in debt. Florida has a big surplus. I mean, you could go down the line. So we'll see. But look, Trump, Trump's going to run on his record. Uh, you know, I saw the president about three, two or three uh, uh months ago and i just said look you look in the camera and say you're better off today than where you were four years ago like reagan did mm -hmm. and you know i don't think many americans i don't care what your ideology is it's hard to say the country's in better shape today oh. than it was for you know four years ago it's not i mean i know people now are living paycheck to paycheck that never would have imagined that happening right because prices yeah. in the grocery stores are so a box of cereal Stephen moore is yeah. 8.99 and it doesn't matter what kind it is. I am like sticker shock when you go to the, the grocery store. And I shop because you guys don't. And it's just mind boggling. And I don't think it's going to get better anytime soon. You know, you, you said that a lot over the months, uh, yes, you know, we've been <laughs> together. And so the last time I went and, and my wife says the same thing to me. She gets so upset. She goes, so Steve, you have no idea what things cost anymore because she does most of the shopping. And, she, and so I did go to the grocery store the other day. She's like, Can you just pick up a few things. And I took fifty dollars, you know, and it was like seven or eight things. I thought, oh, I'll, I'll plenty of money. The bill was like eighty two dollars. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, you're going to have to you're going to have to get the. Uh, the less Even, expensive brand of caviar these days. The Steve. generic brands are expensive too. <laughs> exactly. There's no break. <laughs> uh, Steve Moore, economist, author of Govzilla: How the Relentless Growth of Government Is Devouring Our Economy and Our Freedom. Steve, thanks as always. Okay, guys, have a great day. Take care. Thanks you too. And he joined us on our Turnkey Pro Answer Line. There's only one radio show in Chicago talking about today's biggest stories and telling you what they really mean. That show. Is this one Chicago's morning answer on AM 560 the answer if you're hiring it can feel like you're trying to find a needle in a haystack you can hope the right person comes along or you can just use ZipRecruiter 
And now you can try it for free at ZipRecruiter.com slash free. In fact, ZipRecruiter has helped a lot of business owners find their needle in a haystack. Like Marco, president of operations at Telly Tires and Auto Centers. Because Telly Tires has grown a lot in the last few years, Marco needed to hire everyone from a receptionist to a store manager to a head mechanic. ZipRecruiter helps me find all the right people, even the most difficult jobs to fill. ZipRecruiter helps me keep my business running. Take it from Marco and millions of other businesses who've used ZipRecruiter. ZipRecruiter can help you find the needle in the haystack. See why four out of five employers who post a job on ZipRecruiter get a quality candidate within the first day. And right now you can try ZipRecruiter for free. That's right, free at ZipRecruiter.com slash free. That's ZipRecruiter.com slash F-R-E-E. ZipRecruiter.com slash free. ZipRecruiter, the smartest way to hire. Ah, we 